Hi guys, my name's Alana. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mental Health with Alana. If you're new here, please click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you like content like this. I also have a business called Care Boxes by Alana. I'll put the Instagram here. If you'd like to purchase a sensory box, then please DM me through Instagram um, and you can look at my Instagram page for different boxes that I have. So today I want to answer the question of when did I first start hearing voices. So um, if you're new to my channel, I live with a mental health illness called schizoaffective disorder. Um, I have the bipolar type, so you can either have the depressive type or bipolar. I have the bipolar type. So my first experience with hearing voices would be when I was around, um, I think, 18. Um, so at this point I wasn't diagnosed with bipolar yet, but I had clear signs of it. Um, I developed bipolar when I was around 14. Um, and as I've gotten older, it um, unfortunately got worse and more chronic. Um, and so I was only having hallucinations when I was manic. So they would be um, I think it was mainly auditory. I'm trying to remember because it was quite a while ago. Um, I'm almost 24 now, so I'm pretty sure they were mainly auditory. I think I probably had some tactile and visual ones too. Um, yeah, I definitely had, I'm just remembering now, I definitely had some visual ones as well, but for the most part it was auditory. So like hearing voices, um, and seeing things that aren't there. Um, Sometimes I would get, when I'm really unwell, I get the feeling of bugs crawling in my hair. Um, or at one point I saw bugs in my bed. Um, and I was convinced that my cat had fleas. So I washed everything and freaked out. And then it was still there after I washed it. So I realized that it wasn't real. Um, but yeah, so I started hearing auditory hallucinations when I was around 18 and it would only happen when I had like manic episodes um, and then when the episode ended the hallucinations would. That changed as of about a year ago. Um, I started to experience hallucinations in those three domains basically uh, all the time even when I wasn't in a bipolar episode of mania or depression. It was happening with the auditory, it was constant um, for over a year, every single day, all day, I would experience auditory hallucinations. Um, there'd be multiple voices and um, they weren't nice at all. Um, I never, I'm never comfortable going into like what my hallucinations say um, because I just feel like that's kind of private, but, but they were really bad, basically. They weren't good at all. Um, and it was really, really horrible and difficult. Um, and the thing was with the halluc uh, hallucinations is that, um, again, for some reason, like with the bipolar, for some reason, as I got older, it's become more chronic. Um, so I went into hospital and I was there for about six months. Um, and my diagnosis got changed from just bipolar to schizoaffective with bipolar. Um, so that means I experienced episodes of mania and depression as well as the typical symptoms of schizophrenia. At the time when I was diagnosed, I did not know what schizoaffective was. I had a, a like a okay understanding of schizophrenia, um, as I've studied mental health and things like that. And I watch a lot of YouTube mental health content but I still didn't really understand what was going on and I think because I was very delusional as well I, it, it was very hard for me to understand what this actually meant and when I heard the name schizoaffective I had no clue what that was I'd never heard of it before um so yeah I currently so I was put on 800 milligrams of quetiapine tried a lot of different antipsychotics while I was in hospital. Um, none of them really seemed to work that well. I don't even know what ones I tried. It's honestly a blur. I couldn't keep track. Um, 
I think maybe the problem was that I wasn't on them for long enough to tell. Um, I think maybe my psychiatrist should have waited a little bit longer, but the problem was that she really needed to do something because it was so bad. Um, so I think there was kind of an urgency there to kind of like alleviate symptoms because clearly I was extremely distressed by all of this, um, you know. And so, yeah, that happened. And then I got out of hospital in October. So I was put on 800 milligrams of quetiapin. Um, I'd never been on a dose that big. I think the highest I'd ever been to was 250 for when I was manic. Usually when I'd have manic episodes, my old psychiatrist would just increase the dose of quetiapin from like 50 milligrams to like 250. And that would normally be enough to bring me out of the mania. Um, currently now I'm on a mood stabilizer called sodium valproate and that has really helped my bipolar disorder. When I do get episodes, they're not as severe, they're not as long. Um, and it, I don't get as many episodes anymore. Um, but when I do have mania episodes, the hallucinations do get worse. Um, so I got out of hospital in October. Since then, I've, I had a period where I didn't have any hallucinations. So by the time I was getting to the end of my hospital admission, my, my hallucinations had quietened quite a lot. Um, I stopped having the tactile, but I was still getting visual and auditory. Um, then for a few months, I didn't have any uh, hallucinations. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. Um, unfortunately, recently, within the past month, I would say they have kind of come back a bit more frequent, but they haven't been as distressing um, and it's not constant. Um, I sometimes do have a really bad day or a really bad night where I wake up with them or um, like at night or in the morning or during the day they do get bad. But for the most part, I feel like they are managed a lot better now. And because I've been living with them for so long now, um, I think I've just become a bit more used to it. So um, the content around the hallucinations do often change a bit. Um, so I just don't really know what I'm going to get. Um, there's only really one consistent one that really bothers me. Um, and I will say this because it's not as detailed as some of the other ones. Um, I get a certain hallucination, which I've had since I was about 18. And it's basically like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it's basically like this really horrible like cackling laugh that is like what you would hear from I mean I don't watch horror movies but I assume like something like that like it, it's really scary it's really creepy um it sounds like an old woman like cackling at me like if it, it's laughing at me um and it just goes on and on and um it kind of like taunts haunts me is that the right word like um you know and it also does that laughing thing which that one is probably the worst because it's really freaky um especially when I'm trying to sleep or if I've woken up in the middle of the night with it um or if I'm on my own I don't like that one at all I mean not none of the other ones are very pleasant either but that one probably causes me the most like distress um just because it's so horrible um but yeah, so that's how I started hearing voices. Um, I still do get occasional visual ones. Um, basically, I just see like shapes and numbers normally, um, kind of moving in like a bit of a smoke form. Um, I have had a hallucination where it was like a TV screen flickering with the heaps of images and there was auditory hallucinations that went with it. Um, I've had visual hallucinations of shadows, um, but not a full form person. I've, I've hallucinated physically my dad being home when he wasn't, and he was talking to me as well, so that was auditory as well. Um, and I was very delusional during that hallucination, and I thought it was real. Um, I've had a similar thing happen recently with my mom. But I didn't, um, it was, I was laying in her bed because I was getting hallucinations and I couldn't sleep and, 
Um, I think I mentioned this in another video and I kept trying to say what to her because she was talking to me, but it was, um, what it wasn't making sense and it was like a bunch of just random words and like nonsense, but in that moment I was very delusional, so I, I like in my brain I was trying to make sense of it. Um, yeah, I think for the most part those are the visual things that I get. Um, oh, the other visual ones I get is I see the floor moving, the wall moving. As you can imagine, that makes it very hard to walk. Um, yeah, walls moving. Um, things like that. I, I'm trying to think of what other visual ones I've had, but I think it's mainly those things. Um, but they don't occur as frequently as the auditory. The auditory are the main ones that I get. Um, so yeah, I basically deal with it at the moment by trying to distract myself. Can be quite difficult though because sometimes like I put music on or something but they're talking over the music so it doesn't really help that much. Um, and often my concentration level is quite badly damaged. <laughs> um, so it's very hard for me to, I've mentioned this in other videos, but having an incredibly hard time thinking of, and speaking about things in chronological order, which I never used to have this problem until I was diagnosed with this illness. Um, but I suffer with it quite badly, uh, which means that socializing is very exhausting and I get very overwhelmed with trying to gather my thoughts and I get frustrated because I can't do tasks or think about things in a like correct order if that makes any sense but yeah so that was my kind of experience of first experiencing hallucinations and still got them now um they aren't as bad as what I went through last year that was very very bad but um, people often think that medication gets rid of all your symptoms and that really isn't the case for most people. Most people still have what they call breakthrough symptoms, but it's just that the illness is a bit better managed and not as chronic and severe because if I wasn't put on medication, I would still be in the state I was last year, which was completely non-functional, delusional and psychotic. So yeah. Um, thank you for watching my video. If you like to see other videos on schizoaffective disorder or bipolar, I have two playlists on my channel. I love for you to check them out and I'll see you in my next video.